Hello again, welcome in. It is Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network, taking you into the garage area and talking to the men and women who make the cars go around the racetrack. I'm Steve Post, Pit Road Reporter for Motor Racing Network, joined by 25-time and championship-winning crew chief Todd Gordon, fresh off from a trip to Richmond, Virginia, the capital city of the Commonwealth up there. Todd, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I, like back-to-back weeks at the racetrack, I feel like full-time job again. Man, oh man, back-to-back weeks, back-to-back strategy weeks. Yeah. Well, you're a kid in the candy store the last couple weeks with Pocono on Richmond. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I thought, I thought, you know, I probably see Richmond differently than a lot of people. I love the race. Yeah. I, I do because it's a strategy piece where you're seeing guys, what they're going to do, who's going to short pit, who's going to, you know, when we looked at this to start with, as you looked at the race, I was nervous. I was nervous because we had eight sets of stickers. One's yep. going to start on the car. And if you play the strategy out, stage one goes straight to the lap 70. Stage two, the predominant, and we saw this, the predominant right. call was a double stop. You're going to stop at 50, 50 laps and 100 right. laps and then get to the get to 230 there. Um, and then stage three, the same way, you're only going to have one set of stickers left. And that I was worried that a caution, an untimely caution would put you in a pickle. Because we did end up using all of them. That caution with, what, 10, 12, 13 right. to go? That used the last set of stickers. Yeah. One more caution, and James Small and Martin Truex Jr. are loving life. Yeah, I, I really thought, and, and uh, you know, a great strategy. I thought James Small called a great race, especially, I thought, I, thought I, I missed it. I thought the 19 was going to be the car to beat. Yep. They started a race, and that thing, they dropped anchor. Oh, wow, yeah, they were, yeah, they, they struggled that first stage. I mean, they just, really did. He, he did. He, yeah. and, and really didn't have a whole lot of recovery to it until James went alternate strategy, took stage two and went long and, and only stopped once in stage yeah. two. And their long run speed was really, really impressive. So good long run speed and one other caution in that race. And they're the only ones on fresh tires. Yeah. And where they're sitting, they can, they can do that. They're not. They're, 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 they're in a comfortable spot to take that, especially when you struggle, you come off the box like that. You're like, okay, we've got to do something here. So there were two cars, Michael McDowell and, yep. and Martin Truex Jr. that both tried to, to, to single stop the second stage. Um, James, I thought was a no brainer. They were 20, yeah. uh, 20 something, fourth, fifth, sixth, yep. something like that. They just weren't coming forward. So you need to get off sequence right. and go try something different. And it worked for them. I think they, I, I, I don't know. I think that they ended up getting uh, finished eighth in the yeah, second was, stage yeah uh so they netted way positive uh you know i, I maybe they were they, anyway yeah they, they were they, the 20s yeah, i yeah, thought yeah um michael mcdowell travis peterson that they was, were 13th right and and, and there so the risk and reward piece right if i'm 25th my risk is i i've got 11 spots i could lose yeah i've got 24 i could gain ways right. out i think it worked for him uh, Travis Peterson aggressive move with Michael and and there's there's it didn't work out for him so uh, right. it'll always be second guessed as, as to what happened there but um had a decent car they ended up a lap down in that side that's what sequence. caught them when they got pinned a lap down they the weren't direction. they weren't good enough on that long run like Martin was to maintain to not and they kind of got used up in traffic and lost lap time yeah. too so um you know tough for those guys they're still in a decent position yeah. points wise but. I think they could have been in a little better position if they stayed on strategy, but you don't know until you see right. that run what it's mm -hmm. going to do. And he did. Travis Peterson adapted. He yeah. double stopped the last. Uh, he yeah. didn't do the same thing again because he saw the penalty yet. Right. Yeah. And and there's still and 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 as he talked about, Kim Coon sat down with him our pre race coverage. They had four races, okay, that they mm -hmm. wanted to do: uh, New Hampshire, Pocono, Richmond, and Michigan. And they're seventy five percent of the way through that, still holding serve. They come out of Michigan where they're at in points, and we're going road racing and speedway racing, and they really like their odds. So, uh, yeah, they 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 might want a little bit of a little bit of Richmond points there, but they're still doing big picture what they needed to do to hang on to that last spot. Now another winner changes everything, and you know, so we'll see. Yeah, and that, that's the piece. I mean, Bubba Wallace. Great, great. Put a, yeah. put a really good day together. Really Didn't end up with a finish that they thought they were going to have at the beginning of it, but definitely building that points buffer off of that off of yeah. that Their 16th spot. position because I don't think seeing another winner is out of no. That's I don't, I don't think it's out of the question at all. In fact, I I don't know. I don't know that I'd say it's a probability, but I think it's a very I think possibility. Yeah, I think I think you could you could pick a couple of names out. I think AJ uh, AJ on a road course would be good. I'm telling you the performance of Ty Gibbs. Yes. Ty Gibbs to me 
And that's that could that's, be this weekend. That could th- there's the thing where Ty Gibbs. I think I think AJ's got two good chances and a super speedway. I think Ty Gibbs has got four good chances with the performance of their team because yeah. he's a pretty good little road racer. Yep. Speedways are speedways, and he could be awful good up at Michigan as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and to the piece you talked about, you know, McDowell feels good because he's got those two road courses and a speedway behind it. But AJ's just as good, if not maybe. I I feel like my opinion. I feel like a little bit better when it comes to those road course yeah, races. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I, I, that's one that you're trying to hold back. Ty Gibbs, you're trying to hold back. Chase Elliott actually scored stage points in stage one. The best of the Hendrick cars this weekend. Does it, does that re- revitalize their chances stage of getting two, yeah. a win? I mean, he's not a bad road course racer either. No. So in that whole thing, I think this is it's. I love <laughs> I love the, the schedule that's coming up. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. All right, let's the race winner, Chris Busher. Scott Graves, uh, it, really the whole RFK team. What a what a so day, what a performance! Him. Yeah, um, Chris is one of those guys. I did a radio show. One of our one of our affiliates. I do a radio show, and the guy says, "You know what about Chris Busher?" And I says, "He's a guy that comes in, he works hard, he's got a lot of talent. Mm-hmm. He goes home, he shuts up, he comes back again on Friday or Saturday and does the same thing over and over again, and gives you. He is a hard worker, and boy, it's good to see him. He won at Bristol last year. Of course, he had a Pocono win a few years back." But it's so good to see him put the whole day together and 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 park that car in victory lane. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, that's that was a I think a popular win. No doubt. Overall, I think, I think it, you know it's just and it speaks for where this RFK program is continuing to grow to. Yeah, I mean Brad led a lot of this this yeah. race. They ran one two for a yeah. while. Brad made a mistake getting on pit road into his pit box, and that cost him a bunch of spots. But uh, what he come out sixth, sixth, first uh, and so sixth, first and sixth. Day. Not a bad day. Not at all. I think if we talked to Randall Burnett a couple of weeks ago, and I think if you said to him, you're going to go to Richmond and you're going to finish third, will you take it? Randall said, I'm taking it. I'm taking it to the house. We're taking it to the bank. I talked to Kyle Busch at Pocono. I said, when you look at the next five races, what are you worried about? Richmond. It was not, no, no, there was nothing to come out with a third place finish and their teammate, Austin Dillon with Keith Rodden to get ninth. ninth. Yep. That, to me, I think if you're RFK, you walk out of there with your chest puffed up, but I think if you're RCR, you come out of there feeling pretty good about things, too. Well, that was that was definitely, as we talked to Randall, he was, I, I, I tried to build off a gateway for Loud, and he's like, nope, different arrow package. Different arrow, yeah. Like, very short about it. He's like, we struggle with this package, and they did at Loudon. Right. So this oh, yeah. was their last opportunity before the playoffs to really to work mm-hmm. on that circle track, low downforce package. A great, I, I mean, qualified third, finished third. Yep, backed up maybe into the back half of the top ten. Yep. during the race, I think even Kyle in his interview afterwards said at, at fifty laps in they kind of lost some grip. But um, it's definitely a building block that they've got to build forward for their Martinsville and and presumably Phoenix. You know, I I think Kyle could be one of the final four. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, Stuart Haas Racing, very good day, all in the top 11. We've talked so much about Stuart Haas Racing and their struggles, uh, led by Ryan Priest and Chad Johnston with a fifth place run. Fast, fast car. Yeah, actually, actually, I think Stuart Haas, that's one you got to look back at. Yep. Um, I think both the 41 and 10 could have been winners. Yeah, they're both. The 41, first, first time to pit road. That, that last pit stall, not ideal. No, coming and, off the And they got right kind of, because it's really narrow getting to it, you got to get around the, the inside wall to get to it he got jacked up and pushed through his pit box i think he lost 10 or 11 spots on that cycle uh battle, battle his way back to a top five finish um the 10 car eric yeah. amarola was really strong uh green flag pit cycle second stage first time commitment box violation yep. right sides across that orange box had to do a pass through if you look at the math a pass through is 17 to 18 seconds of of, mm-hmm. of you Slow know time yep. that you lose up he finished stage two, 18 seconds behind the leader. Right there. Like, like the, they had the potential and the speed and drove themselves back to a top 10 finish. Right. Absolutely. A couple of other quick notes from Richmond. Carson Hosevar and Phil Gould picked up their third win of the season in the truck series. The playoffs start next Friday night at Lucas Oil Raceway Park. Motor Racing Network will be there. And how about Corey Heim and Scott Zipidelli, regular season champions? And Corey missed a race. Yes. Yeah. What very a, impressive. That, that's very impressive. And Scott's been around that truck series. He's 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 Man, really knowledgeable I'm, about I'm, what's going I'm on. I'm doing a truck series team and got an unlimited budget. Scott's going to be the first guy I'm calling and going to be a well paid crew chief because that that that's a guy that builds a team for you. He does he does very well and he understands working with kids. 
Yes. Like helping yeah, them to really mature. Does. And it's done a, done a great job with Corey here. And be interesting to see how this plays out. Ty Majeski, best car there. Yeah. Uh, sorry, best truck there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, and I don't, some people will blame Joe Shear Jr. for, for not stop, for not stopping. I, I, I'm sorry. I see it differently. I think Joe did the right thing. I think the, the, the fact that there was no caution in the last 40 laps put him in a situation where he was either going to have long run speed to just beat him or not enough to end yes. up second. Right. Um, you know, caution at 225. Yeah. He looks like a hero. Yeah. So, um, it's one of those things that it's one of those situational pieces. You look at it and say, well, they should have. Well, they should have, but if the caution comes out 10 laps later, they shouldn't have. They shouldn't so have. Exactly. it's, you don't, I don't have that crystal ball for the crew mm -hmm. chief that sees what the future is going to do. Yeah. You make the call on what you think got. I think it was a good gamble for Joe Shear. Um, just didn't work out, but the playoffs start next week. That's right. Absolutely. And speaking of veteran crew chiefs and young racers, Sam Mayer got his career first one up in Road America with Marty Lindley calling the shot. Love that. Love that. Good stuff in the NASCAR world. And speaking of good stuff in the NASCAR world, Darian Grubb, he is the crew chief for Project 91, and he is also the director of performance at Trackhouse Racing. He joins us coming up next here on Crew Call. Welcome back. It is Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. We are going right to it, right to our guest Zoom, uh, joining us uh, from the test session. We record this on Tuesday morning. There's no sense in dancing around this. We record this on Tuesday morning. And joining us from the infield at Richmond International Raceway is Darian Grubb. He is the Director of Performance up at Trackhouse Racing, along with the crew chief of Project 91. Hello, Darian. How are you? Good morning, guys. And yeah, hopefully it doesn't get too loud. We'll be on track here soon. So hopefully we can still hear each other. Well, that is cool. That is, uh, we, we love the live look. We love the live shot. That's for sure. I mean, radio, we love the background noise, love right? Love the background so, noise. It's we'll called, see what we get. It's called Nat Sound is what it's called in radio, and we love it. That's for sure. Project 91, Shane Van Gisberg winning Chicago. Just how do you process all of that, Darian? Uh, you just got, got to go along with it. I mean, it was just an amazing experience with him coming over with very little experience in the cup car, just basically having one quick test and going up there and just kind of dominating the weekend, having a great car and a great path and, uh, dealing with all the conditions we did with the rain and the rain tires and single file restarts and all those things seemed to fall our way and just watching him go out there and put on a show was just amazing. Yeah, definitely. The show, I, I felt like the show was, and we missed it in a lot of ways. The 18th to the lead show, we got to see from about fifth to the lead, but uh, picking through that, it was, it was impressive to see what you could do. Um, you got the win at Chicago. I didn't think there was a chance that you could win there. I was wrong. <laughs> I just, I, you know, to bring somebody in brand new, uh, obviously the supercar stuff is very similar racing style to what we have here in Cup. You're taking them to Indy now. What's your expectations there and, and what's your takeaway from just the interaction with Shane? I think it's much the same. Uh, we, we expect to go up there and be fast and be competitive, but it all just depends on really how the weekend goes. It's truly going to be a completely different scenario because this is a track that all the other cup teams have experience on. They have their notebook from last year. They know what to expect. Uh, it's going to be different for him as far as that goes, and he'll have to do the double file restarts and all the other things that kind of come along with it. So it will be different. Uh, it won't be quite as easy, but he's also extremely talented. This is what he does for a living, and uh, I think he's going to be pretty solid either way. It's just we got to make sure we qualify good and put him in the best shot. I've got I've got two other things about him, and we'll get into one of them later. But I'll hit this one: uh, Brody Kostecki, uh coming to run an RCR car as well. Is there a rivalry between those two? Are they friends? How's that relationship? And, and will we see that faster any on, on, on the track at Indy? Have you guys talked about that? We have a little bit. Uh, they're definitely uh, tough competitors over there. and They race pretty tough in the supercar series. They, they do bang fenders a lot. And it's, that's a group that is actually ahead of them in points right now because of the way they perform through the year. So there, I'm sure there's some uh, rivalries just because they're coming over from the different series. But Luckily, Shane's already got that feather in his cap. Like, hey, I've got my trophy I can show, and uh, good luck in trying to get yours. But uh, I'm sure they will, they will have their internal competition. But then you've also got guys like uh, Kamui Kobayashi and Jensen Button, these other guys, Andy Lally. They're, they all could be considered ringers because they're all professionals at what they do, and they're all coming in the races. 
Yeah, I hope it puts on an amazing show for the fans. I find this so fascinating about it. And and obviously, Justin Marks is such an international guy. You know, he's going out and he's looking at this. Have you been a guy or are you a guy that when 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 you when you do this, are, are, are you looking over abroad or that sort of thing? Or is Justin just saying, I've got this guy, Shane's going to drive the car and you start Googling then? How how active are you looking at things like that for, for future drivers? It really is all up to Justin. Justin Marks has an amazing vision, and he has his connections all over the world for these things. And he just comes to us and says, hey, what do you think about this? Can we make this happen? What Do you think there's any negatives to some of the solutions and stuff he's come up with? And so far, it's just really, we put the work to the ground. After he comes in and lays it on our, in our lap, we say, yes, sir, and uh, go out and put it together. Uh, he he has amazing vision, and I said, say he's been doing a great job by stirring up things and doing things differently than most of the other uh, regulars do. So that's gotten us a lot of publicity and uh, obviously a lot of performance as well. And and not trying to get too out in front of the skis, but actually asking the question too far out in front of the skis, the Project 91 program, uh, future visions, do you see more opportunities coming within the 2023 year? And, and I guess my second to that is I'd love to see, I'd love to see SVG get an oval. There an opportunity that may happen at some point. Yeah, I'd love to see the same thing. Uh, and we weren't expecting to go to Indy when we left Chicago. <laughs> so things obviously change. Uh, if, if Justin pulls mm-hmm. things together and he wants to do something, it's another one of those items where we say, yes, sir. Uh, obviously, we'd all love to see what Shane can do on an oval, how he would adapt and how he would uh, fare there. So hopefully it's something we will get to see soon. But I'm, I'm not really any part of those discussions. I just say, yes, sir, and go out there and get the job done if we can. That's a great way to approach it, for sure, especially working with a guy like Justin, that's for sure. Darian, you had so many years on the pit box um, as far as a pit crew, uh, 334 starts. You stepped away full-time from the pit box. Was there ever any thought that I'm not going to go to victory lane again, that's not part of what I'm doing? And and if so, how rewarding was it in Chicago to get that feeling again on top of that pit box? It is something I had thought about for sure. As you step away from the pit box and you, you assume that you're not going to crew chief anymore, you just kind of take those of, all right, there's my stats. Everything looks pretty good. And I'm very happy with that and the way my career has gone. And then something like this gets thrown in your lap and you go out there and you pull off another win. And it's just, it's more excitement. Uh, one of the reasons I tried to step back was to spend some more time with my kids. And now that we pulled the win off in Chicago, they're both, itching they really want to go to indy in case we win again so it has a double-edged sword with a lot of these things and uh it, it's a lot of fun uh i have to say adding to those stats for a situation like that is just amazing uh, just can't uh say how blessed i am to be able to be in that situation and and talk about the track house culture because it's different right it, it, and you're you're part of this and you, you kind of got those different pieces but justin and and everybody there has created a different culture. You've had experience at Hendrick. You've had experience at Joe Gibbs. You've had ex- experience at Stuart Haas. How is Trackhouse different? It, it's more just a small team atmosphere. Uh, I have to say, Justin's vision is truly small team. Everybody working together. Everybody pulling their weight. Everybody has to do multiple jobs. Like everybody that is on that Project Ninety One group has a full time job. So we just do this on the side because we all love it. We all pat each other on the back. We go in, take the extra workload. Every man and woman there at Trackhouse gladly smiles and shows up and says, yes, sir. And that, that's kind of our culture, and that's what we do. Uh, we do have fun uh, each day when we go to work. It, it's going to work with your friends. And today is a perfect example that I won't make it back in time from this test to go to it, but we have a family night. We're going over to Charlotte Motor Speedway, and they're going to race some school buses and going to have some pit crew guys versus some shop guys versus some management. And that's the kind of things we do for fun. And it's, it's been two weeks leading up to this where everybody's talking trash. They're out there painting their school buses up and all these things, too. So that that's what is all about and enjoying and going in, smiling, wanting to see your competitors and uh, your teammates is, is a big deal. Yeah, it's final night of the summer shootout out at uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway. And yeah, it is a track house throwdown is what we're going to have out there with the school buses and everything else. Um, and uh, as you're watching this, it has already happened, but uh, it's really, really fun. And I love that culture. But but Darian, with all of that, your experience at Hendrick, your experience at Stewart's Haas and at Joe Gibbs Racing, that that 
some people come into the sport and stay in one place the whole time. And I think that's a wonderful way to operate your career. By bouncing around a little bit, you have got to have a wealth, a width of knowledge and things that really helps you with your with your duties there. Yeah, absolutely. Every one of those positions has uh, helped me grow as an individual. And there were times where I made changes that I didn't want to make. Uh, but there were times too, like when uh, whenever to start with Stuart Haas and Mr. Hendrick himself asked me to do that, to work with Tony Stewart. That was something that they were a satellite team of ours. We used Hendrick chassis and Hendrick engines and all those things. So when Mr. Hendrick comes to you and says, hey, I'd really like for you to do this, you say, yes, sir. And it it all worked out well and ended up uh, kind of biting them a little bit because we went and won some races and won some championships. Uh, But then uh, going to make the decision to crew chief with Denny later on and with Joe Gibbs Racing, learned a lot of things there working with Carl Edwards and then kind of coming back to the Hendrick organization and going into the production and engineering role, uh, got a chance to step back into crew chief there. You learn different management styles and different focuses, uh, the way each group uh, operates. And there's always good and bad with every organization for sure. So you just had to take those uh, lessons. And one of the things that comes out of it is I'm old. I've been around, I've seen a lot of things and, and luckily, Justin respects that. And he asked my opinion on a lot of things and working with Tony Lunders and guys like that that I've worked in a sport around all these years, we, we can put a pretty good solid program together. And there's probably very few situations that one of us hasn't seen before in our career. So we know how to deal with it. You go through and you roll with the punches and hopefully you can make your team better from all that. How do you balance? Uh, I mean, you're, you're, I guess you're the title I read, Director of Performance and crew chief for the Project 91. How do you balance that between being team-centric where, you, where you, you're the Project 91, you're your car, but you're also the global uh, global director for all the programs there? Yeah, it, it, it's tough. I mean, it's honestly a lot, but it's all about trusting your people and delegating the resources to the right spot at the right time. Uh, we have amazing individuals that work there at Trackhouse. Uh, a lot of the former employees that came over from Chip Ganassi Racing and stuff, I had a lot of experience. And they were able to come in and just jump right into those roles. And then we hired a lot of new people that came in too, uh, changing the culture and changing the attitude and the way we were going to operate. And it's been an amazing experience. So being able to help develop the people is something I really enjoy doing. Um, the through chiefing side of that is fun as well because you're putting the team together and kind of grabbing all your buddies in the shop to go out and go Saturday night racing. It's kind of what it feels like because it's on the side from what we normally do as, as the normal work lead weekly work Um, but there's times like this where we go testing and stuff and i'm the guy that's got to go to those tests and try to get as much information as we can working with the chevrolet group and trying to pull together what we do with all of our key partner teams making the best product the best tools and everything that we can have as far as chevrolet racing goes yeah that's uh that that's impressive and and i love the little background noise we've got with, with cars around the racetrack uh working on tires i think today aero stuff yesterday how does that OEM interaction with NASCAR on development of a new package or you know, trying to come up with what the package will be going forward, how is that interaction done and how is it different than it's been in years before, past? It's different from years past for sure because they're more open. They actually want the team's uh, expertise and stuff to weigh in on all these one. Like you said, doing tires this morning, they got a lot of software compounds, a lot of thicker tread gauge and some other things too, hoping for more fall off. It's all the things the fans ask for in most cases. And we're out here trying to put a lot of those theories to test and see what does actually affect the racing. Can, can we make the tires get hot and get slimy and give up grip? Can we make uh, the aero situation a little bit better for the guy in second versus the lead? But after every one of these little mini races that we do, all the drivers and crew chiefs get together. They give honest feedback. NASCAR is listening. They're working with the people and they have, they ask us basically, what do you think the next step should be? Where should we go? And they go home and they retool things last night, came in for another test plan today. And they seem to do that much more often. So when we actually work together as a group because the OEMs will converse and talk about what we all think and all the teams as well. And it's about the, the health of the sport, the good of the sport and the good of the whole NASCAR. It's really nice to be able to put those work together. Darian, as we look at this thing, track house racing, you have Ross locked in. You're trying to get Daniel locked into the playoffs. Um, where are you guys at? What are you, what are you working on? Where, where's your performance at um, where, where we sit right now? 
Yeah, I'll say honestly, we've been struggling a little bit lately. We haven't been able to get the qualifying positions that we need to be able to start towards the front and have a good solid race. We've been starting from behind, so that's a big focus uh, for sure, trying to get uh, deeper into the field and be in position later in races. But we're missing out on stage points. We're missing out on good race finishes. Uh, our short track program has struggled a little bit, so we put a lot more focus on it in the last few weeks trying to figure out what it is we're missing, uh, trying to put it together. But obviously, the Chevrolet as a whole, we've seen to have lost our edge that we had to start the season off. So we're mm-hmm. trying to compare notes with our competitors and our teammates as well because uh, it's not good enough. And we, we, we need to get stronger as we go into the playoffs for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, there's, 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 there's time to do that, that's for sure. Not a lot of time, but there is time to do it, that's for sure. Darian, we appreciate your time joining us here on the program. We know you got to get back to that test and start calling through all of the data and listening to what's going on. Thanks so much for joining us here on Crew Call. Thanks a lot, guys. There we go. Darian Grubb from up at Trackhouse Racing, the Director of Performance and the Crew Chief for Project 91. Stay with us. More Crew Call in just a moment. Welcome back. It is Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Live, live at track uh, li- live at track interviews. Pretty good stuff, wasn't Love it? A little back, bit of background noise. You have to kind of listen to it to get it all, but uh, you know, it's, it's cool. And, you know, kudos to NASCAR for, for trying to make our product better, right? Yeah. And, and, and as Darian talked about, love the fact that NASCAR and the teams are really interactive about this. I feel like that happened with the next-gen car through the, through the winter from, what, 21 to 22? Right. We, we spent a lot of time working on the aero package, and it, it came out with a car that we really, I think, puts on great intermediate racing. Now we're trying to address that on, on, the, on the short track and, and ro- road course side. And NASCAR is not giving up. As, as we've always talked about, this is a journey. It's not like get to a point. It's how can we continue to make the product better. Love that we're looking at different things that Goodyear's involved in it from a tire standpoint today that we've done some aero stuff. Wasn't a home run on the aero side, but at least, hey, sometimes those, those base hits get you an opportunity to look in a different direction. Well, sometimes no is a good answer. Well, knowing where not to go is as good as knowing where to go. That's exactly. That's exactly it. You know, we tried this and it didn't work. We tried that and it didn't work. Well, okay, then let's go somewhere else. So sometimes, you know, and, and, you know, I, I make, I made the mistake Monday night of going on social media. Uh, And again, that is a mistake. Okay. Because it's like, I can't believe NASCAR's failed. No, NASCAR hasn't failed on this test project. Okay. Yeah. They've got a couple answers that maybe didn't go in the direction, but the thing of it is, is that you, you've got to get these boundaries, these no's out of the way before you find your yeses. So. Yeah. And every team out there thought that this, I mean, yeah. they, they had looked, they had had these parts to look at the wind tunnel data. Yeah. They all said they're going to be plowing tight. And every one of the drivers said, I'm wrecking loose. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not just NASCAR that no, doesn't understand the this. Thing. All the teams are looking at it and collaboratively. Mm-hmm. they're going to come to a point where they're they're in a, a good position and and mm-hmm. i think they're tr- everybody's trying to make the sport better yeah and the racing better right absolutely which is pretty good right now it is pretty we good. just have to look for it the right way yeah absolutely good stuff that is for sure michigan what yeah. are you looking at crew chief when we go to michigan other than to uh other than to present Edsel Ford with that trophy, okay, the manufacturer's trophy is on the line this weekend. I've done that once or twice or maybe four times. How rewarding is that? Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Edsel- my, my first win, my first cup win was Michigan. Really? Yeah, 2013. I think it was the first year of the, uh, of the Heritage Trophy. The Heritage Trophy, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, I don't, is, I don't know if it was is, or not. Somebody is, was saying it 10 years. Or, I don't know. But. It's, it, you know, when you, when you have, when you have in, in, in all the manufacturers, they all put so much into this and l- love all the manufacturers. But when you have Edsel Ford of Ford, okay, yeah. and he's just such a cool, unassuming oh. guy, the most unassuming guy, that to me, I, I get a charge. I've done a couple of victory lanes with Ford in victory lane at Michigan, and to see him there, and the look on his face, and then to see the driver look over and realize, whoa, I'm yeah. giving Ed. Edsel Ford has everything in the world. You're giving him something that he wants more than everything in the world. He's a racer. Yes, he is. He is. He's a racer. And, and, <laughs> and what, a, what a genuinely great person. Uh, down to earth, he's level. I mean, he's Edsel Ford, but he's, you wouldn't know it. No. To, to carry on a conversation, the detail that he knows, and, and, and how invested he is into his racing program. Yeah. I think. Uh, he sees great things and, and you know, he sees opportunities and, and loves to help people get to those points. 
it's really cool to go to Michigan and have that opportunity to race in front of your OEMs and, mm-hmm. and, you know, I mean, namesakes, right? Yeah, absolutely. In his, in his instance, for sure. Okay. So how do you, how does one attack the racing at Michigan so that you can have a shot at that heritage trophy? That's going to be, that's going to be interesting because I think, I feel like, you know, I feel like you've got a handle, but you, you've got a handle enough to be wide open. And, and, and it's changed. The evolution of yep. that has changed as we were, you know, the Gen 6 car back in the 550 with the big, the 550 package, we had a lot of drag on the car, a lot of downforce in the car. You're trying to trim it out and it, it, it wasn't a speedway race, but you still wanted to handle, but you wanted to take some drag out of the car. Now with this car, I think you want to make all the downforce you can. I don't think you can get wide open all the way. I mean, yeah. I, I just, we've got more power, we're lifting. So the more downforce you can make, the better off you can be, the earlier you can get back to the throttle middle of the corner. Big sweeping corners. Uh, there's some traction. They've added traction uh, to it in the, in the past. So the second to third lane comes mm-hmm. into play. If they over apply that, it ends up being dominant. By the end of the race, maybe the bottom comes back. We'll, we'll see where it all goes. But it's it's unique in that way. And I don't feel like this is one that you look at having an impact in any place you go in the playoff. Mm-hmm. But you still got you win your manufacturer's when home you, racetrack. It's well, a big deal. There's points on the line, and uh, there's there's points on the line. And if you're one of those guys outside, a win at Michigan is as good as a win and puts you in. If you're on the inside, playoff bonus points. There's so much on the line this weekend. Yeah, I, I won this race with Blaney in 2021, and it was all about getting a push. So, um, yeah. you know, Kyle Busch got us a, a push to get clear, and and uh, you know, we we held it from there. So, yeah. uh, a cool place. I really love it. That 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 part of the country is just beautiful this time of year. Um, you know, it's 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 a it's an awesome place to get to. There's a lot to it with all of the OEMs focusing on it. Um, I know this is pretty high on Doug Yates, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, radar <laughs> being Ford's background. So uh, yeah. it'll be. And I'm sure it is for everybody at Chevrolet as yeah. well. So uh, it's just uh, my history's been you know mostly Ford. So uh, yeah, I, I love it getting there. It puts on a great show. Great show, that's for sure. Motor Racing Network, they're all weekend long. We start 6 o'clock on Friday evening, Eastern Time. The Arca Menard Series, the Henry Ford Health 200. On Saturday, 12.30 in the afternoon, 12.30 Eastern Time, NASCAR Cup Series practice and qualifying at 3 o'clock. NASCAR Xfinity Series, the Cabo Wabo 250. Man, I hope that comes with samples. Oh, are you kidding me? And then on Sunday at 1.30 Eastern Time, the Firekeeper Casino 400 for the NASCAR Cup Series. It is going to be fun. Love getting up to Michigan. I really, truly do. So love talking with Darian Grubb as well as we did today. Yeah. Yeah. What a class act. What what a great guy. And, 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 you know, really to see him win at, at, at at Chicago street course was phenomenal and his whole program. But, you know, it's, I I understand him totally, right? We've both stepped off the pit box. box. Have you enjoyed your last win? I, I never live in the never say never. Um, but maybe you, the, you've increased the odds yes. that you've had your last cup win yeah, yeah, as had Darian yeah. until July. And, and you wouldn't have thought, and I, I think they've that's done a great area. job in it, but I never would have thought that this project 91 program would have, yeah. would have gotten to that point. It worked out for them. The weather, the new format, yeah. Shane and, and Darian did a great job of preparing, um, and everybody on the project 91 team, but, uh, be cool to see what they can do at Indy. We do the crew chief uh, winners call when the race is done. We jump up on the pit box and talk. And it was just cool to jump up there and talk to Darian Grubb. It was just cool to go up that to go up those stairs and know who I was going to talk to and what it meant to him. So uh, fun stuff for sure. We appreciate Darian Grubb joining us. But more important than all of that, thank you for joining us. He's Todd Gordon. I'm Steve Post. Thank you for checking us out this time on Crew Call.